Faith Church, I do not, uh, I don't know what Netflix series you're binging on right now or what TV show that you're, you're hooked on to, but I, I cannot imagine that the drama is more <laughs> intriguing and crazy than it is in Genesis. If you're reading through Genesis with us, every chapter, uh, it's just, uh, like I said the other day, Hollywood can't make this stuff up. Chapter 39 today is the story of um, Joseph in Potiphar's house. And finally, we have somebody in Genesis acting with some integrity. There are some other examples, but it seems like more people in God's family making poor choices than good choices. And here is is Joseph making a good choice to resist the advances of Potiphar's wife, even though it, it cost him his freedom. It wasn't really free in the first place, but uh, it's, a, it's an amazing story. I hope you get a chance to, to read and reflect on it today. Um, as I did, I was just thinking about, you know, Joseph is, is God's instrument. God's going to use Joseph, if you know the story, to really save his entire family and provide a place for Jacob, Israel's family, to become the nation of Israel. Uh, Joseph has an incredibly important role, and yet God allows Joseph to go into some really hard places. He is abandoned by his family. He ends up as a slave. He ends up then in prison. Uh, and, and these are hard, hard places. And, and yet God allows this to happen to, to his servant, his instrument really um, for good. And, and I wonder, you know, maybe some of us can relate. Maybe you have, maybe God has allowed you into a hard place in life in the past or even, even today. Um, you know, a lot of us to some degree are in a hard place because of this pandemic. Um, although for most of us, this is not that difficult. For some, it's very difficult. But others of you have found yourselves or find yourself in a very difficult place. And the reality is that God has allowed that to happen. He, he does allow his own people to go into hard places, sometimes for his own purposes. But one of the things I noticed, and this is the difference here, that God uses his people in those hard places to, to bring blessing, to do good things. Notice that in uh, Potiphar's house, Joseph is used to bring blessing to that whole household in amazing ways. At the end of the chapter, Joseph is used in the prison to organize the whole prison and to bring blessing to that play, hard place that he's in. And if, as you know the story, uh, God later uses Joseph to not only bless all of Egypt, but then bless all of, of Israel in, in some hard places. And this is, this is typical. Um, and it's a reminder that whatever hard place God may have you in or may lead you in, that God's design, as you allow him to, is to use you in those um, hard places. I want you to notice in the story of Joseph that it's not just to bless Joseph, that God really mostly uses Joseph to bless others. He blesses Potiphar's household. He's a blessing to all in the jail, ultimately a blessing to all of Egypt and Israel. And it's the same, that God, God's design is to use you in whatever hard place you're in to bless those around you, including yourself, but to, 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 to use you to be an encouragement, to bring good things to other people. Um, heard the story the other day about a, a father who lost his son to, um, to drugs, a drug overdose, and there's probably nothing more I can imagine in this life that's as painful as losing uh, a child or a, a spouse, a, a dear loved one like that. And yet this man has now been used by God to come alongside other parents whose children are facing drug abuse and addiction and to, or losing kids and, and has brought those, um, helped to bring those families some hope. God has allowed this man into a hard place, but using him to bless others in that place. And I just again would ask you where, where might God want to, to use you in whatever difficult place that you might find yourself. The psalm today was Psalm 48, a great psalm. I just want to read one verse again for you. Verse 9 says, We ponder your steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. Such a great verse that I would encourage you, whatever your temple is, wherever your sanctuary that you've made today, that you would take a moment to just ponder God's love for you, that uh, he, does, he does love you. He's working out his purposes in, his, in your life, even, even in the hard places. 
um, the more we need to keep coming back and being reminded that uh, this that God does love us uh, and, and that love never changes and we will see the fruits of that love in time um, so I encourage you a couple reminders um, there's a, some great class opportunities tonight the Holy Spirit class will happen tomorrow the the uh, opportunity with Ron Beams to, to just to consider um, how we're finding hope and some of the challenges that we face in life and then uh, Sunday evening Rick Hull will share from his experience recent experiences in Ethiopia to see to he hear from him how God is at work in that nation which we have come to love um, so I encourage you to be uh, a part of all those all those the information for all those is online um, including thinking about being a part of Team World Vision. You heard about that Sunday with Dave and, Dave and Jill, and I, I, I'm going to sign up and hope that you will consider signing up and running the, the uh, Urban, Urban Cow with us this October and raising money for clean water in Africa. Love to have you join that team. So wherever you are, I, I pray that you will, you will know the, the love of God today and the grace and peace of Christ and the fellowship of His Spirit. Peace.